Well, come along, guys. Well, I've decided to take the weapon out for a spin. I haven't ridden this in quite a while, so I thought, I want to get out again before there's too much... I don't know if there's any salt on the road or not, and maybe not. So I wanted to get out on the H2 again before the salt goes down, before everything, before the winter really sets in, and I can't... So I'm not riding it in the winter, obviously. So this is it, a quick spin on the H2. Just took... So it's been about a month, maybe two months since I've ridden this bike. So I really wanted to get out on it again. See what she's like. Remind me why I have this absolute beast of a bike. Let's do it. Yeah, it's got a bit of pull. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. It's weird, you ever in the bike for a while and you go on it again, it's almost like you're riding for the first time. And this bike, what, what I love about this thing, is just initial throttle opening, it's got so much power there. So much initial power with hardly any throttle input. Makes it an absolute joy to ride. Just with that much go on tap from, you know, any revs, just a tiny bit of throttle input, and it picks up so smoothly and beautifully. That's the first thing I've missed about this. But anyway, enough of that. This, this video really is just a little catch-up video, really. No other reason than I just want to go out on the bike and I thought, can't go out on the H2 without strapping the cameras on. So here we are. I just did the uh, Motorcycle Live last Sunday. So I was on the Customer Fit Guard stand. Those who came to see me, thanks so much for coming to say hello made me feel like a superstar. I had a queue of people at one point. <laughs> it's like, what is going on? But it's amazing to meet you guys and, and those who said hello, thanks very much indeed. But everyone asked me, the first, every single person who spoke to me, the first thing they said is, have you bought that Tohono yet? And I'm like, no, I haven't. Basically, I tried to sell the GSXR. I think I've decided, well, I have really decided the GSXR is for sale. And it was on eBay a couple of weeks ago. If I could have sold that for the sort of money I needed to get the Tuono, I probably would have done it. As time's gone on, it's like these things. If, if I had struck while the iron had been hot, I probably would have bought one. But as I've sat down and I've thought about it and I've realised that would be a bit of a rash decision, I'm probably, hence the word probably, not going to get one. Never say never, <laughs> but my current thinking is probably not. Stay. Don't you start again. Why, Chops? Why are you not getting a Tuono? Well, the GSXR is going. I've sort of 99.9% .9 made my mind up that I do not need two sports bikes. That is just ridiculous. So, if I buy a Tuono, what I'm thinking, I'm just going to be riding on these same roads. The same roads as what I'm riding on with this. So even though it's a more comfortable bike, more road focused, it's still going to be riding around on the same roads. So what I'm thinking now, and something I've been really missing, is a bit of supermoto action. If I get a supermoto, I can then go on all the little back lanes and it opens up the whole avenue of riding again. You're not just riding on these same tiresome, overcrowded roads. So, I'm thinking, Supermoto. I do quite like the look of the Hypermotard still. I've ridden the, the 936 version. 936? That, that was okay, it didn't blow me away. But the new 950, I'm really liking the look of, and it's a little bit lighter little bit more power and I just prefer the whole styling of it. It looks more like the original 1100. So I'm thinking maybe a Hypermotard. KTM did mention to me borrowing a, an SMCR for long-term loan next season. So I really need to see what's happening with that because there's no point in me buying a Hypermotard if KTM are then willing to lend me for all next season an SMCR. So that, that's no point. So I need to see what KTM uh, I've got up their sleeves and if it includes anything to do with the chops. <laughs> Hopefully it will. So much power at the bottom on this. Plans for the H2 is still going to be mapped. 
Chris at CJS Dino has just done another H2. He's just had one in and he's done his fancy mapping on it. Managed to get 250 at the back wheel. <laughs> it was the same model as mine, so he's got a, and it had a Fandimon on it as well. So it's very similar spec, so we can more or less probably lift that map onto mine and then just tweak it slightly, but it will save a lot of work. But for next season, she will be running roughly 250 horsepower the back wheel. And the bike doesn't need any more. It's not crying out for more power. Not at all. But if you can do it, why wouldn't you? You've got the bike which has got the potential there, just with a simple chip tune. Why would you not just let it run at its full potential? So, yeah, you've got to do it, I think. If you've got H2, you've got to get it running at its full potential. However crazy that might be. I do love that pop. Mid-range is a little bit snatchy on this. I'm hoping that's one of the things we can address with the map. I wasn't expecting it to come up like that then. Woohoo! 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 Oh! Oh! Oh, I could do that all day. I've been a bit of a tart and I've bought the H2R side wings in carbon fibre. I've bought the whole front cow in carbon fibre. So it's going to be like a H2R replica really. I'm not going to do the full-on no mirrors, big fins on there because I like the mirrors. But it's going to have the side wings, the carbon front cowl, and they're going to be going on like a little garage video fitting those carbon bits. So that's from Moto Composites, my favourite carbon provider. It's great to be on this again, actually. It may be big, it may be stupid. But it is just very cool, I'm sorry. They've started putting up these noise cameras around Lumi's area. So I'm staying away from Lumi's at the moment because there's noise cameras going up. Bloody unbelievable. They're actually doing it, so could be the end in noisy motorcycles. But I just hope they're not set to be too ridiculously sensitive. I'm hoping I can pull the clutch as I go past on this and get away with it. Stay. That's the thumbnail. Bang a boom. Because it's winter, because there's not going to be as much riding going on, I've actually got some enduro bikes to use over the winter, so the lanes and stuff. So that's going to be a few videos coming off road. Now I know they're never very popular, I know a lot of you guys don't like the enduro stuff but it's good fun, it's, you know, it's limited riding in the winter so I'm going to be testing some enduro and having a laugh with the lads out on the dirt. It's great fun guys, so honestly, let me tempt you into watching those videos while you stand back and watch a man drop his H2 on the gravel. Hey! A lot of people have said, you know, in my Tuono GSX-R video, sell the H2 you don't need that. Get the Tuono, keep the GSX-R. Yeah, I love this too much. And the value of these are actually starting to go up a little bit. I couldn't buy one of these now for the price I paid for it. I don't know why. I mean, obviously I didn't pay full price for this. It was a pre-reg bike that had been sat in a dealer for a year. So I've got a good deal on this, and there's no deals like that anymore. I could probably sell this for what I bought it for, and maybe make a few quid. That's how much they've gone up. And what with the new Top Gun movie coming out and Maverick having an H2 in that. <laughs> it's possible that they could go up even more. So, you know, this bike is also a little bit of an investment, maybe. Yeah, it's something a little bit special. And that's why I love it. You know, it's ridiculous. It's too heavy. I can't use it on track because it's too noisy. You know, it's all of that, and you're absolutely right, the people who pointed that out. But it's just an exceptional motorcycle. 
exceptionally well made, the engineering feat. I actually love the, the way it rides as well. It's a very nice bike to ride, it has a real premium feel to it. I get on the GSX after riding this and I'm like, ooh, God, it's horrible. It takes me a couple of rides to get back into enjoying the, the ride of the GSXR after riding this. This is a little bit more uncomfortable than the GSXR, a little bit. They do do those slight rises for this Kawasaki, which I probably will get, but it feels fine today. It's just a case of getting used to that sports bike position. Yeah, I don't want to go touring on this, of course not. But it's just a special bike and for the moment it's staying with me. I've got plans for it, it's going to look incredible with the, the H2R wings on it and stuff. And 250 horsepower. It's something to keep, at least for the time being anyway. And I like having something which is a bit special. Now I sold the blade, which is at Motorcycle Live by the way, I saw it there on Sunday. The first time I've seen Beastie in about a year or plus. It was weird to see it again. I was like, oh wow, it's beastie. And it was like, just looking at the bike, every detail of the bike, I knew about that detail. You know, I, I put those, I made those fairing brackets up. I, I, you know, I've had that bike to pieces so many times. It was strange just to look at it and go, that little bolt there, there's a history of that bolt. And only I know about it. You know, it was, it was weird. I didn't think I need that bike back but I wouldn't mind it back <laughs> if I had the room. The main reason I got rid of it was because of room and lack thereof. Anyway, I'm going to draw this one to a close because I'm just literally rambling now. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys. This will probably be the last ride of the season on the H2, probably the GSXR as well because the weather is turning and I'm not a winter rider, not on sports bikes anyway, pointless, pointless. So these will be tucked up nicely in the garage. I'll keep you posted what's going on on the new bike front, but I'm probably going to keep the GSXR until the spring when prices start to go up a little bit. You know, it's, it's selling a bike this time of year is ridiculous. So I did, I did that with the Super Duke last year and ended up giving it away. So I was selling it at the wrong time of the year. So I'm going to hold off and just see. I want to test the new Super Duke. I want to test these new Nakeds. That could be the way to go, you know? And if, if KTM sort me out with an SMCR or I'm thinking maybe the Enduro R and then putting Enduro and then putting SM wheels on it and having a best of both hybrid type thing if they sort me out with that next season then yeah maybe I'll get a maybe I'll get the new Super Duke as well <laughs> and have a garage slam packed full of exotica but there we go I'm gonna leave you to it guys you've got things to do I expect people to see jobs to do your lunch breaks nearly over you've nearly finished your poo it's time to wipe so I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, one last thing before I go. I'm going to be on Mr. TMF's live stream on the 29th of November. So if you're free at 8 o'clock on the 29th, I'm going to be a guest star on TMF's live, live stream. So come along, say hi, give us some shit on the comments. <laughs> Otherwise it's going to be like, it's going to be like, smashy and nicey but with a lot less hair going on <laughs> come along and join us see you there this is power level one which is full power This thing is absolutely bonkers. It's also pretty quick. Yeah, right. Never mind getting beat up. Give me this any day of the week. Oh, <laughs> oh shit.